Happy Saturday to you everyone, day after Christmas, and if you got a puppy for Christmas, then like I said in yesterday's video, you're going to want to prioritize part of your life, and part of that will become making sure this puppy gets housebroken as soon as possible. I mean, that just moves right to the very front of the list for most people. So let's get it done. Yesterday we talked about what is housebreaking in its essence. Really, it's, it's this, you deciding where your dog's going to go potty. Uh, seeing how they can't really climb up on the toilet. No one's, you know, I don't know if anyone's taught a dog how to do that, but I didn't, and you probably will not either. So that being said, most of us want our dogs to go outside. In yesterday's video, I showed how what we need to do is teach the animal how to interact with this environment. And the outside will become a very safe place to go potty. No corrections outside, none whatsoever, especially in the beginning. I don't care if your dog poops dead smack in the middle of your rose garden. Probably won't. Probably get a thorn or two and it'll probably learn, don't go with the hair. But I don't care what it is. It's outside. Outside is good for now. We'll talk about later on uh, in upcoming videos about how you can shift that later, but not today. Not when you're first getting started. Inside your house is safe. Safe. That should be, uh, I'm sorry, dangerous. Dangerous. Dangerous in your danger, Will Robinson. His danger in here. It's safe out here. And then for those of you who live in condos or townhouses or in high-rises, you may opt to use a pee pad or what they call now poop patch. You can buy all sorts of things online. It looks like artificial turf. It's in a little box, kind of like a litter box for dogs. The, you can put it out on your patio. The dog can be trained to go there on that. And then you can just whisk out the stuff from underneath it, clean it out real quick with a hose, and you're good to go and just take it down to the trash and, and get rid of the waste there. Uh, a lot of nice inventions making housebreaking a whole lot easier for everyone out there nowadays. But at the end of the day, I don't care what kind of equipment you get. I don't care what it costs, what it looks like, uh, how it functions. At the end of the day, you are going to be the reason why your dog is housebroken. You, you getting busy, you not being lazy, you doing everything that I tell you to do. And if you do so, you're going to be good to go. Okay, so let's talk about some equipment, seeing how we just kind of briefly touched on that. Let's talk about equipment that I feel that you're going to need as a minimum. First thing first, a crate. A crate. This right here is called a rough land kennel. It just happens to be one of my favorites. You can use whatever you wish. Although I highly recommend a few things when it comes to using a crate with your dog. Number one, escape proof. Yeah, you do not even want to let that genie out of the bottle. As soon as the dog figures out I can get out of this thing, I'm telling you what, it will be absolutely determined to get out of that kennel. And then one day when you get a new one that it can't escape from, you're going to shoot its anxiety level straight through the roof. Start right in right, baby. Get yourself a good solid crate. And again, I have probably used every single one out on the market that is solid, solid in its construction, meaning it doesn't look like a bird cage or a wire cage. I wrote about why I don't use those in my book, Embracing the Wild and Your Dog. I also wrote about why I don't do it and Housebreaking, 10 Steps to Success. And I've also have some previous videos I've talked about why we use the solid kennel. In short, den dwelling instincts. Remember, your dog is 99.8% wolf on a mitochondrial DNA sequence. That means it still has processes and structures that it taps into from a behavioral standpoint. It's been proven, been proven by many universities, high levels of academia, that when dogs are placed in open air kennels, the ones that I probably like because I like being outdoors more than I like being indoors. You see most of my videos are probably outdoors. I would like a 360 degree view and I'd like a lot of fresh air coming in. However, your dog doesn't. Because what it in essence means is that when I'm in an open air kennel, I'm in an open air trap. Yeah, I can be attacked from all angles. That den, that den in the beginning serves as a safety area for the pups. Not so much about your comfort. Arctic wolves are born above ground. The tundra is frozen. They can't make a den. They can't do it. So they simply live above ground. It's all about safety. If you're down in this little hole, we can at least eliminate birds of prey. We can eliminate some badgers and wolverines because if they're going to come down that hole and get the cubs, well, they're going to have to come face down, squeeze their way in, and they're going to be facing mama. 
So it's kind of like crawling down the, a loaded barrel of a gun, and most animals are smart enough not to do that. But there's a lot of reasons. Go check out those videos in my books and, and just hop into them, and you'll find out why I like a solid crate. Now, if you're going to get a solid crate, make sure it is indeed solid construction. That's why I'm, I just happen to love this particular brand because it is solid, baby. The door is open from both sides, and you can get them in all sorts of configurations. Trust me, I'm getting one right now that will be configured in a way that you see this door here in the front. You can get, get them with them also in the back. So yeah, you can access this kennel from both ends. And we have our own new puppy that's going to be arriving late January. And trust me, when your puppy goes potty in your kennel, which they will, that, just get over that right now. That's probably going to happen. When they go into the kennel, it just makes it a whole lot easier for you if you can access that mess, get it cleaned up, get it cleaned up the way you should clean up, or not having to crawl in the darn thing. There's nothing worse than having to do that. And then if you want to take it out back and rinse it out, if you don't have a door on the other end, everything just kind of pulls to the back of the kennel. And you heard me say yesterday, a little attracts and a lot repels. Well, when a little bit, these little micro molecules, just little big pieces of feces and still some urine kind of caught that the hose didn't catch and your cleaning stuff didn't catch, when it, when it kind of congregates in the back of the kennel, well, that's where your puppy will go. I'm going to tell you right now, most pups, if they go potty in their kennel, they're not going up here in the front area where they lie, where they're all constantly looking out, where they're active. No, they're going to go back there in the very back, as far back as they possibly can. And again, you don't clean all of that up, and your puppy will now be able to locate and go, keep getting reinforced. Okay, is this where I'm supposed to go? Is this where I'm supposed to go? When I identify this particular substrate, I, nothing happens to me, but the problem is the dog hasn't made the connection. That, yeah, yeah, you're right, dog, but it's outside, not in the kennel, not in my house. It's outside. It takes them a while to put those things together, all those little components. It just takes a little bit. So I have to be patient with that. But make sure it's got solid walls, and I'd also go ahead and get one that will fit your dog when it's an adult. Because I always advise, always have a crate. In fact, this is Captain's. This is Captain's crate. Because there are times in which I just need to crate my dog. It is not a training moment. It's not even a teachable moment. I have people coming to my home that are working in my home that leave the darn doors open. Even though you tell them to close them, they leave them wide open, giving your dog unfettered access to the rest of the world. Or they're afraid of your dog. They're afraid of it. Or the dog's afraid of them for whatever reason. Okay, so here you go. In your box you go. Go settle down. Here, here, here's a little bone. Go chew on that for a little while and I'll come get you out in a little bit. I always recommend having a crate. Plus, when Karen and I would travel a lot with our dogs, especially Captain, when we were going on a book tour, oh my gosh, you know, if you stayed in a hotel, you know what I'm talking about. You get the old knock, knock and enter. You'd think that these people who work there, the maids and the, and the employees of the hotel, were law enforcement. Knock, knock, boom, kick the door in. You know, you wonder, why do you even bother to knock? Because you just open the door up. Now, imagine... You've dropped off your dog in a room, and you've left the room to go get something to eat. There's no one in the room but your dog, and not knock door open. The dog's out on the boulevard. Again, I can go on and on. I highly recommend a crate. I recommend for traveling, everything. And so, again, buy one that's going to fit your dog when it's an adult. Now, because of that, you may have the issue in which the young puppy will go to the back, use the bathroom in there, versus holding it. Because... The issue is, is if you can make it tight enough, because they're naturally clean animals, most dogs really won't want to go in a space in which they can't avoid where they go. They really don't. But these young, young puppies, when I say young puppies, you, most pu people should be getting their puppies between 8 and 10 weeks of age. No sooner than that, no later than that. There's reasons for it. But between 8 and 10 weeks of age, I am telling you what, they, there's not going to be this hold it for eight hours. That's not happening. You might as well just wrap your head around that right now. They will not be able to hold it for eight hours. And I don't even care if they're asleep. So that means in the middle of the night, if you want an eight-hour sleep, then be prepared to clean out a kennel when you get up. 
And therefore, yeah, they're going to go in the back, let it go. They'll become larger, take up more space. And as they do, their bodies will change. And if they truly hate going in near them, then it will finally just go away. Sometimes you can put things in there to block off some of the room. And again, just be smart about it. Don't put anything in there that your puppy can climb up on because they're really smart. Okay, I'll just go potty down there and climb up on the shelf and I'll be up here high and dry. You also don't want to put anything in the kennel to cut down on the space that could harm your puppy. You know, like big blocks of wood. They start chewing on that wood and all of a sudden they get splinters all in them, all inside their intestines. Don't do that. You don't want to put anything that can fall over on them and crush them and break their tiny little bones. Be careful about what you put in. I've had people put in steel briefcases and just wedge them in there with tie-tie strips or whatever. That worked. Uh, years ago, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend this nowadays, but years ago, I'm talking about 30 years ago, I had some college kids in a frat put cases of beer. They stacked up cases of beer inside there. But back then, those cans were thick. They were like steel cans. They're not like today's cheap, flimsy aluminum. Uh, a puppy's sharp little teeth can probably puncture one of those. So I wouldn't recommend you do that. But use your brain. You're a smart dog owner. You'll come up with something. But at the end of the day, if you got a lot of spare money, then you just keep buying crates that fit your dog, just like shoes for a child that's growing up. But for the rest of us, no, I'm getting a kennel. When our little puppy comes here, she will be put in a kennel that will fit her when she's an adult. There you go. Okay, so that's your crate. Next thing that you're going to need is a long leash. You Okay, just know this right now. You're going to need a long leash. All this equipment I'm telling you about, don't sit there and say maybe, possibly, no way. You want to do this thing and do it right, which, when, again, not just doing it right doesn't just keep your house clean, but it cuts down on the amount of stress that your puppy will incur during this process. Because, again, remember from yesterday, you're asking your puppy to do something completely unnatural. So there goes stress right off the bat. So get over it. If you don't like long leashes and you can't handle it, then you shouldn't have a dog. You will need a long leash because this kennel back here is going to be your passive trainer. This is the thing that you're going to put your puppy in, and most puppies, when they're in there, are going to want to hold it. They're going to go, gosh, i got to go, but I really don't want to go in here. I really don't. I really want to kind of go out there, not in here. So that's your passive trainer. The long leash is what you will use as your active trainer, meaning when that puppy is out of its kennel, then a little long leash needs to be attached to your puppy and attached to you. Yeah, if not you, then attached to something near you or your foot's on it. And the reason being is we have to be consistent. And I'll talk about this more tomorrow, but let me just kind of give you a little trailer here. You catch your, potty, uh, your puppy going potty in your home today, then you don't tomorrow because you had no way of monitoring its whereabouts because you didn't bother to put a long leash on. You're sitting there thinking, is my puppy a pet or a prisoner? Now, you need to get over that attitude if you have it. You need to supervise your puppy because here's what I will learn. You catch it, then you don't, then you do, then you don't, then you do, then you don't because you don't bother to use a long line or your kennel. And here's what your puppy learns. It's not dangerous to go in this environment. No, just dangerous to go in front of you. And next thing you know, there they go, down the hallway to that guest bedroom that no one uses but maybe twice a year, that formal dining room that you probably just used and probably won't use again for the rest of the year. No, they won't go in the kitchen. They're not going to go in the den. They're not going to go in your home office. They're going to go somewhere else where it is safe to go away from you because the first thing they're going to pick up before they learn about the difference in the environments, safe to go outside, dangerous to go inside, is they're going to learn it's dangerous to go in front of you. And don't let them do that. Don't let them do that. You have to supervise your dog's whereabouts. And that means they have to be on a long leash. How long? 10 to 15 feet, and sometimes only 2 feet. I've had people sit on a sofa, long line attached to their puppy, did everything I told them to do except one thing. They didn't. They had the leash too much slack out. So the puppy, while they're sitting there watching some football game or whatever, the puppy went around behind the sofa and went potty. And they weren't aware of that until they smelled it. And then by then, it's too late to do anything about it. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Okay, long line. Safety rule. 
If you cannot observe your puppy, you cannot directly supervise your puppy when it's on this long line, then it's off and your puppy is back in its crate. Okay, you've got to do this. And again, we're going to talk more and more about this. You also probably want a short leash. Why? Because you may take your dog on a walk, you know, 10 week old puppy, you can start to work a little bit on that heel by doing luring and a short leash will be more effective in teaching that than a long leash. So again, always have your regular old training equipment. Okay, now one thing that's a regular old training equipment that I highly recommend for that you do not use for housebreaking, and that's treats. Treats. No, I use <laughs> I use treats for a lot of things, but there's two behaviors I never reward, ever, ever, ever reward. And one of those is housebreaking, going potty outside, and the other one's for jumping on me and get your paws off of me. No. I don't do that, and here's why. Again, I told you yesterday, they are equipped. Your puppy, very quickly, within two, three weeks, will be able to hold it for that eight hours that you want it to. And, but the biggest thing that they can do from right off the bat, I mean, right off the bat, the second you get this puppy and bring it home, is partial elimination. Remember, they use this waste as a tool. They use it to communicate with conspecifics. So therefore, Unlike you, you might be able to do it. I can't. You got a hundred percent full bladder. You take your puppy outside in the safe area and tell it to go potty, and you keep giving it a treat every time it does so. Here's what happens: I go out, I let out ten percent. That's it. I can shut it off like that. You try doing that. I let out ten percent. Then I turn around and go, "Okay, I'm ready for that treat now. I'm ready. I'm ready." Yeah, because the puppy learns. I go a little bit. They don't, they don't know that you're sitting there asking them to go the entire amount. They just go through the motions of going potty. Then they shut it right off and come back and get that treat. But you, however, unbeknownst to you, they, have, they did not fully eliminate. And now you go bring this puppy back into your house and you go get ready for work and you go do this or whatever you have to do, leaving the puppy kind of unattended. You're thinking, oh, I don't need to put it in this crate. I don't need to put it on the long line. You know, this is the exception that Brian didn't bother to speak about in the video. Well, well, now I am talking about it. And next thing you know, you walk back into the room and you get greeted with a mess on the floor. And you're thinking, what the heck? I just took you out 10 minutes ago. How come you went in here? Because I didn't fully go. You disrupted me with the presence of that treat. So now the pup comes in and goes, okay, well, there's no treats because they're gone. And I have to go. So they go. No treats, guys. You don't need to. You have nature on your side. They will have to eliminate now, if you ever take your puppy out and you think, did you go all the way? I don't think you went all You'll be able to tell soon. Trust me. You might, for maybe the first week, maybe kind of have to get a little low because they're really low to the ground. You're wondering. Yeah. Okay. When in doubt, <laughs> you're on the long line, baby. So what? So what? We'll talk about tomorrow what I talk about. Wrong is good, baby. Please go in my house. I can't wait for you to go in my house. I can't wait. Most people, oh, they're, they're, they're not like that, but I'm going to talk about that tomorrow. I can't wait for you to go potty in my house. Yeah, let's go. Because that means we get to learn. I get to give feedback. But again, no treats. Okay? I will talk heavily about that in the next coming days as we work our way through housebreaking. But trust me on it. No treats. Okay, next thing, methodology. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. Here's the deal. When you ask an animal to do something unnatural that does not come natural to it, then you're going to have to disrupt thousands of years of evolution. And what's going to do that? You need to give me a reason. So what's the reason? Okay, it's dangerous to go in here. That's a good reason. Biologically prepared learning. Also has survival value. Outside safe to go. Survival value. Remember, I've told you many times, anything that has survival value attached to it, I will learn it, and I will learn it in a real hurry, and I will retain it forever. So if you're one of these people who, if your dog goes potty in your house and you don't want to correct it, you want to do this all positive thing, well, here's your deal. You get to keep housebreaking your puppy till it's two or three years of age, the most of you. Again, there's no absolutes in any sort of behavior in any sort of training. I'm just talking about, in general, most of us. Because here's why. If there's not a cost for doing a behavior and there's only a benefit with the behavior, then the animal in need 
in exigent circumstances, like I really have to go, nothing's going to thwart that. I'll just go. There's no deterrent for that. I'll just go. Just go. Why? 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 It feels actually pretty good when I go. So that's the first reward. That's a benefit. Man, I got, whew, thank God I got to go. So I've already got a benefit. And now all of a sudden there's no cost and I go in here in the house. So what are you going to do? Yeah, you can continue to take your dog out all the time. All the time. All the time. And outside will soon form what's called a signal suite. Meaning the smell of chlorophyll being released from the grass as you step on it. The overturned dirt. All of this stuff we talked about in tracking. The breeze in my face, the sun at this angle, the sound of the dog down the street. All of these will combine to form a condition in which if I go potty, nothing happens to me. It just becomes where I go because I get taken out here 12 times a day. It becomes a habit. It starts working its way from explicit memory all the way over here to implicit memory. It takes a long, long, long time. Long time, long time before that gets done. And I've known many dogs that just never did get done. So I'm, what I'm saying is, apply a cost to it. If you catch your potty, puppy going potty, we'll talk again. We'll talk more about that tomorrow. Tomorrow we get really busy into this thing. We're just going to stick with a no for now. No slapping the hands and loud noises and air horns going off and party favors. No way. Now we have a dog who will grow up to be sound phobic. We will talk about a stern no the level of tone that you should give that no, the timing involved, what you should do afterwards. But know this, this is, needs to be approached from a cost-benefit analysis, not just benefit alone. And I'll make more sense to you as we move through that. Okay, and then the last thing I want to talk about real quick today is cleanup, because if your dog has an accident today inside the house, messes inside the house, before you get deep in this thing, and start having some success, do me a favor. Do not, listen to these words again, do not allow your, pup, your puppy to observe you cleaning up the mess. I cannot tell you how great your dog can smell. They even have what's called a vomeral nasal organ in the roof of their mouth. They can taste scent. They can lick it with their tongue and place it on that organ and break it down to a periodic table and create an odor mosaic. It's incredible. So that means, first of all, unless you plan on using a fire, you're not going to put anything where that dog went that's going to totally mask it. So the best thing you can do is not draw your dog's attention to it. Because when you're down there on all four and you're scrubbing that thing up there, you know what you look like from an animal's perspective, from a dog, well, a canine's perspective? You look like you're burying something. And guess what? What, what do we use to locate caches? Huh? Stuff that we buried? Vomit? Did I say to feed the youngins two days from now? Yeah, I use a little urine droplet. Then when I dig it up, I'll probably just poop in it. Make sure I don't go back to it later thinking there is food in there when there's not food in there because I dug it up two days ago and forgot about it. Now I just wasted all these, these calories digging up an empty hole. Hence why, by the way, if your dog ever digs holes in your yard, put their feces in it. Works like a champ for that very reason. But again, here you are drawing this dog's attention to a spot because they're going, hey, um, what, are you, what are you doing over there? What are you burying over there? Again, how do I learn? free exploration and mimicry. So I come on over there and I get to sniff and I go, oh, and remember a little attracts and a lot repels? Yeah. Wow, I didn't know we could go in here. It's a lot better in here. It's not as cold, not wet, not as scary. I just go in here. So please do me a favor. If you have to clean up after your puppy, put your puppy away. Hand that long lead to someone else. Say, do me a favor, take the puppy into the kitchen real quick, please. And I'll let you know when the puppy can come out. Or go put it in this crate. Nice safe crate. Hang out in there for a little bit. I'll come get you in just a few minutes. And then you don't have to worry about it. You know, it, it, the puppy just moving through your home to happenstance will probably come across that smell eventually. But then again, it may not. And I'm just going to opt for, okay, well, you don't have to work for it. I'm not just going to give it away 
where it is. You adopt that same attitude. Okay, guys, so hopefully not, tomorrow we get busy. We start talking about timing. We start talking about corrections. We talk about more about consistency. But make sure you have your equipment. Make sure you're ready to go. And if you've got one of these wire kennels, I'll talk tomorrow what you can do so you don't have to now go today and get in the long return line at all the stores and swap that thing out. No, we'll, we'll make do with what you have, and I'll just kind of give you a little tip on how to make that possible. All right, so again, crates, long lines, got to have them, baby. Otherwise, you're not going to get this thing done and done right. We will use a methodology that comes with a cost, a cost involved. We will not use treats. The benefit will be natural. I got to relieve myself, and nothing happened to me. Good for you, dog. And we're going to move on down the road. And we're not going to allow our dogs to see us clean up. No way, no how. Not happening. Okay, and tomorrow we get busy and you're going to start moving on down the road. And again, when we get our own puppy, you'll see us do the exact same thing that I'm telling you. And we're all together going to get through housebreaking. All right, enjoy the rest of your day. I'll check in with you tomorrow morning. Take care.